Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the class three of the Web Information Systems course. Uh, in this module, I'm going to talk about XML. So before this, we looked at HTML, which was designed for web browsers to understand and display web pages. On the other hand, when we talk about XML, we are it's used to describe the content and aimed at being both human and machine readable. So it stands for extensible markup language. It is the most common tool for data transmission and it is very convenient for data transport and storage, especially when the data is getting used by different applications. You don't need any special uh, software editor to create or edit XML documents, which also makes it very uh, easy to use. And so also, unlike the HTML, when we found that we looked at these predefined tags, you can also define your own tags to make the data more readable and personalized, depending on the domain of the application. There are three major components uh, of XML, which we are going to discuss briefly today. The first is the XML itself, and we look at the components shortly. The next one, which we're going to look at, is XSL, which uh, we use this data to display the XML data. So, XML itself is the way to store the data, but in order to visualize it, you may have to convert it to, say, HTML, in which case you will need the XSL. The XSD, which is the XML schema definition, describes the structure of an XML document. So it's an, an agreement of the format in which the XML document should be. It specifies how to formally describe all the elements present in an XML document. So um, if we let's look at this little example, the first very first line is called the processing instruction, which gives you the version which we are using for the XML. So this is the information which is provided and important for the XML parser. The next line shows how you would use uh, is the syntax used for commenting your XML document. And then you have the element. For example, you see the note. And this is again similar, if you remember, from HTML that for every tag note, there is a closing tag note. And so the XML element is everything from and including the XML start tag and including the XML's end tag. So everything inside these the note tags is called the element. So it can contain other elements, like you can see to or from, but you can also, cont it contains text and other attributes. Again, attributes we've seen in the HTML. So attributes are associated with elements to add more metadata or semantic information to the element. They are defined like the same the, for the syntax is similar to the HTML attributes, as you can see from this example, where we have source equal to contacts. So it's the same where it's value equal to into double quotes, the, the attribute feature. Here it's the contact. And another important thing you need to see is that XML documents should only contain one root element. So in this particular example, your root element is note. So everything is inside the note, and it has to be well-formed and valid. So all tags need to have these corresponding end tags. So again, in this example, for every note, there is an end tag for note, for to, for from, for heading and for body, all of them have their closing tags. But another important thing you need to see is it needs to be nested. So you cannot have overlap. Like in this example, suppose you have author, your author tags, and then you have, you describe, you define a name tag. But if the author tag is ending before your name tag, there is an overlap. So this is not allowed. And the other thing also is, of course, attributes need to be must be double quoted, which we again looked at. The other thing is validity. The, the XML document must be well formed and conforming to the schema. And again, we will look at this in the slides as well as in the examples, which we will discuss during our in-class 
assignment. But what it really means is that it has to comply with the schema, the grammar definitions, which have been established. Of course, uh, the XML document has a tree structure, which we've looked at. And uh, so, which again contains this one single root element and then other sub elements come from that. And uh, the tags are case sensitive. So name with uh, a capital N is different from name without any capital letters in it. And then we looked at the, uh, the syntax for commenting. It can also contain, uh, we looked at the XML element, for example, the one, uh, the note, which we saw in that uh, the, the XML document. But uh, as mentioned earlier, it can contain other elements as well as text and attributes. And there are some uh, constraints on val the valid names which we can assign since these are user defined. You cannot start with any special characters but you can have them in between. And uh, so these are the examples of some valid names and some invalid names, which you need to take into account when you create your own XML document. Now the data will uh, go in inside as elements. So for example, here we have the first tag is uh, element is person inside which we then define the name and here the value is uh, the data is john so that john is the data inside these tags then uh, the metadata or the attribute information is defined again as shown and we've looked at some more examples and we'll also look at some more examples in uh, the hands-on assignment and uh, we have basically uh, two versions of XML, we can have the 1.0 and we can have 1.1. In general, for English documents, it doesn't really matter. You can use 1.0. So what 1.1 really does is it expands the set of characters allowed as name characters. So you can use symbols like copyright symbol or mathematical operators but as your name characters. However, uh, 1.0, you cannot and in 1.0, you cannot use the names beginning with, say, 2. So um, what 1.0 is uh, forward compatible, but 1.1 is not backward compatible. All right, so looking at the XML namespaces, now, suppose we are all using uh, XML documents for our application and defining our own elements. But now we have some uh, ambiguation. For example, in this example, we have two separate files with different definitions. Because one is for the hardware uh, file and the other is uh, for office data storage. So as you can see, they have different uh, data parameters. So how do we distinguish between these two? So since we mean that these two are different data. So the solution is that you use something called as XML namespaces. So in this particular example, and in order to do that, you have to use the XML uh, namespace is defined by the XML NS attribute in the start tag of the element. And uh, it has, uh, uh, for example, in this particular example, we have prefixed the first file, the hardware file, with the pre-value with uh, the value h, whereas the one for the data storage, we have prefixed it as o, as you can see here. So uh, every element which has been prefixed by h now is from the http www.hardware.com namespace, while anything that does not have a prefix ha does not have a namespace associated with it. Similarly, for the um, prefix O, that has then the office.com uh, slash people uh, namespace associated with it. 
So if you use these two different namespace URLs, now the XML parser will know that they are different and can uh, distinguish between the two. So now we just looked at the uh, XML namespace in order to disambiguate between uh, different data types. But so we've already created this XML document. Now, how do we uh, decode this in order to do something with this data? So for that, we need to use XML parsers. So parsing is the act of splitting up the information into its component parts in order to understand the content. So the parser in this particular case would read the XML document, decode the syntax and pass the meaningful objects for the other for the applications. The parser might also provide some additional information or services such as validation to make sure that the document conforms to the XML schema. We look at some parsers again in the class. So using Java. So please, uh, so that you get a better idea of how to use them and how to play with that. Uh, please make sure and install the software. The link has already been provided on Pilot. And uh, specifically, we will look at uh, three different parsers, the SACS, which is simple API for XML, the DOM, the document object model, and Stacks, the streaming API for XML. And uh, if you want to now compare uh, the three, you will have to know a little bit more about parsers. So most parsers offer at least two different APIs. So typically an object model API and an event API, also called stream API. So the Java platform, which we are looking at right now, ships with both the DOM as well as the SACS. So the DOM is the object model part of it, and then the SACS is for the stream part of it, or the event model part of it. Both sets of APIs offer the same services. That is decoding the document with the optional validation, namespace resolution, and more. So the difference is not in the services, but in the data model used by the API. So for example, again, this depends, the parser you use will depend predominantly on your application. For example, if you want to access multiple XML documents or multiple items from a single XML document simultaneously, as well as read and write XML documents, then you use DOM. Because as you can see, uh, DOM offers both your reading and writing in XML files. However, it the drawback with using DOM is that it loads the entire document into the memory. So it has a large memory footprint. Now, SAX, on the other hand, is uh, does not load the entire XML document. Instead, it has an event handler, so that if an event occurs, then it invokes that event handler. But its disadvantage is that it is a read-only parser, and also that it is a push parser, which means that the parser controls the reading loop. So in practice, when the application calls the parser, it will not return until the end of the file. Now, in between, between these two ranges, the SAX and the DOM, is something in between called the stacks, which is the streaming API for XML. So it's a hybrid of the SACS and DOM. It is bidirectional, so it allows you to read multiple XML documents at a time. And uh, it and in this particular case, the application controls the loop. So it is the responsibility of the application to call the parser repetitively in a loop until the end of the document is reached. Okay, so now let's look at uh, XSL. So this is the language, as mentioned earlier, to express the style sheets in order to visualize your XML document. So we've looked at XML parsers, we've looked at how to create your XML documents. Now it's uh, now we need a tool to visualize this data because it is not easily human readable. So in order to do that, we have there are three. Uh, there are some elements of XSL which we need to understand a little more in detail. Uh, there is the XSLT, which is the language uh, with which we create these style sheets. 
uh, to visualize the XML data. Then there is the expat, which is the querying language to select the nodes from an XML document. And then there are some more vocabulary elements which we use to specify the semantics of the XML data. So we looked at, uh, we talked, uh, so one of the elements we discussed right now was the expat. So let's consider this example. It's again from W3 schools. Um, we want to understand what the expat would do. So on the left, you have an XML document which contains the root node bookstore inside which there are the elements for two different books. One is Harry Potter and one is learning XML with uh, different, some more data about the price information on the title as given here. And there are some attributes also that you can see, like the language is English. So now suppose, so what do we do with the X path? Now we want to access these nodes. So as mentioned earlier, your root element is bookstore. So if I use slash bookstore, then I am selecting the root element bookstore in this particular example. So also note that if the path starts with a slash, as it is in this case, it always represents an absolute path to an element. Now, what if I add uh, the node book to it? What does that do? So it selects all the book elements, which are the children, which are children elements for the node children nodes of the node bookstore. And what do I mean if I have two uh, slashes and then book? So this selects all the book elements, no matter where they are in the document. So these are just some examples which we have uh, provided. Now, um, if, as we saw that there was an attribute here, lang, the language, right? Langu so here we are saying lang, attribute lang equals n, so this is English. So if I wanted to get some information, if I wanted to access all the attributes which were called lang, then I would use this last one where we use the at the rate symbol. So you would have two dag slashes and then the at the rate symbol lang. So that would select all the attributes that are named lang in this particular example. So again, I encourage you guys to go back, go to W3 schools and play with more examples to understand these uh, different components better. And again, I want to very briefly talk about a little bit about the Excel, uh, XSL, uh, the styling for the XML documents. As mentioned earlier, it is a language to convert XML documents to other formats. So suppose I had XML data, which I wanted to display in tabular form in HTML. We looked at how to create tables with HTML in the previous class. So um, in order to do that, we would have to attach this a styling sheet, XSLT, in order to uh, visualize the XML data. Again, this is a W3C recommendation. You would use the XPath to access all these node information. And there would be, there are all, there are other uh, styling, uh, there are different attributes and very, it is, you could compare it to the CSS styling sheet. You would have, there are different parameters such as the, again, div, then there is value of parameter and again there are attributes like select and style which you can also play with using the w3 schools so this is all i really want to talk about for xml uh, and let us go a little more into detail with that with the hands-on assignments